Hi, I'm John Twist of University Motors. I'm here today to talk about SU carburetors. SU stands for Skinner's Union. They were purchased by uh, Morris in 1925 and ever since have been part of the larger BMC British Motor um, British Motor organization. And SUs were used on lots and lots of different cars, but of course I'm an MG guy, so we're going to see this all from the MG perspective. This is an HS2 carburetor. Let me show you the various components here. We have the damper on the top, the damper which uh, gives us a, a um, rich mixture on acceleration. We have our suction chamber here. We have a spring which has been grossly pulled out and, and distorted. We have an air piston with a tapered needle on, on the bottom. All right, so here's one moving part in the carburetor right here. That's, that's one moving part. Then we have our, our body here, and we have the choke, which we can drop. You can see it dropping here. All right, that's for cold start. So that's our second moving part. Then we have our throttle disc, the butterfly. All carburetors have got a butterfly, right? So that's our third moving part. And then we have our float bowl with our float on the underside, and that's our fourth moving part. So we only have four moving parts in this carburetor and I want to tell you that except for special applications uh, this has got to be one of the most wonderful most versatile carburetors that, that there is and it will work well for you you only have to understand how it works so let's take a look on the board and see if we, we can make uh, make sense out, out of this if we have a, a carburetor that is is running I'm using way too light of a, of a uh, guy here I wonder if our green will show up. If we're trying to mix gasoline going down this tube, we got a float bowl on the side here. Okay, we have a float bowl in a in a jet coming down down to here, so we can get our our air our fuel mixed with the air coming down down through here. We're not going to mix any fuel unless we put a venturi in here. And a venturi is simply an area that that uh, is smaller in diameter than the rest of the the uh, tube, and that causes the the air to speed up. If the air speeds up, there is a vacuum there, and the difference in pressure. We have atmospheric pressure pushing on the gasoline in our float bowl and pushing the gasoline up and pushing it into the airflow here, because the pressure here is greater than the pressure here. Everybody talks about carburetors sucking, but there's no such thing as sucking. There's only such a thing as pressure. Now, let's say that we have a constant load and a constant use. This is fine. This is all the carburetor that you would ever need, except that most applications require something else, certainly the MGs. So the first thing that we have to do is put a throttle disc in here, uh, the throttle disc that I, I showed you. So here's our big throttle disc here. And this allows more or less amount of air to get sucked into the engine. Now when the engine's running, it's got the massive vacuum in here, just a massive vacuum. All it wants to do is breathe and run. All it wants to do is, is, uh, is have this air get pushed through and into the engine. But one size jet doesn't work all the time. So in this application, in our SUs, we're now going to make the top part of our Venturi movable. These are called variable choke carburetors. We're going to put a tapered needle on the bottom of our, our air piston here. I'm not a very good illustrator. We're going to put a bell on top of this and we're going to put a hole in the back of this piston so that when we begin to open up our throttle disc and our vacuum is moved to here, that vacuum is moved up into here, up above the air piston, and fresh air, which is able to get into the bottom of the piston, can push up, push this piston up, and withdraw this tapered needle out of the fixed jet so that we can mix a different amount of fuel depending on whether we've got a lot of air going through the carburetor or not. 
So we've satisfied the two conditions so far. One is we can change the, the speed of the air going through the carburetor and we can adjust the mixture uh, based on that speed. Another thing that we have to do is give it a burst of extra gasoline right when it accelerates. Now in an, a normal kind of carburetor you have a, an accelerator pump and you actually push the gasoline in. Great big droplets, uh, Weber carburetors do that. Here we have on top of here, up, up inside here we have a valve. We have a, a dash pot inside here with a one-way valve. It's filled with oil. It's really a shock absorber and it restricts the upward movement of this air piston, um, restricts that um, when you go to accelerate. So let's take our throttle disc and turn him sideways. You're r running down the road at 30 miles an hour and, and you put your foot to, to the floor the throttle disc goes straight. Now you get this monster vacuum which is in the engine here. It gets transferred to here and if it suddenly gets transferred up into here, this piston will pull up and pull this needle out of the jet too quickly and it will also open up this area here too quickly and you'll lose the vacuum. By putting oil in here in a one-way valve, the shock absorber called your dash pot, the damper, by restricting the upward motion of the piston we keep this venturi abnormally small for a short amount of time and the vacuum here then is much greater than it would be nat naturally and more gasoline gets sucked out into the airflow. So now we've been able to change the speed, we're able to change the mixture, we're able to accelerate, all we have to do is make this thing start when it's stone cold in the morning and the way that that's done is to put the jet here on a movable a movable device so that you can pull the jet downwards and actually pull the pull the jet away from the taper needle so that the gasoline puddles on top of the jet. So this is our SU carburetor. It's as complicated as it is.